Gene and I met at Tiffany, and they took it out and they showed it to us on a beautiful cloth, et cetera. And um, I think when they, you know, they did it very dramatically, when they showed it to us, Gene and I both said, wow. You know, I mean, we, we knew it was a masterpiece. The actual inspiration for the award was the Trilon and, and the Perisphere, the building in the 1939 World's Fair. You gotta understand how incredibly famous that image is. Back then, that meant everything, and the World's Fair. Oh shit, I, I better answer, I better answer it. Who's buzzing? When I first talked to Gene Federico about working on an on award together, I said that kind of configuration could, could become a great logo. Gene did a schematic drawing of the sketches we did, and the first the prototype with Tiffany was this A and this D. Just the idea that you have it and you can move it into place is so tactile. I've had people who got the award who say that the thrill of it, above and beyond the look of it, is that fact that it's movable, even though you don't move it, <laughs> you know? I probably joined a club when I was uh, started to work at CBS. I, I'm no party boy, believe me, but uh, it was a way uh, for a lot of us to meet each other. From the first day I met Paul Rand, I, mean, I thought he was uh, a god, and maybe he thought I was Jesus, because we really hit it off and have great respect for each other. I think the idea of the club uh, really makes sense. People getting to know each other and being inspired by each other. My first day working for Bill Golden at CBS, and I go up to his secretary and I said, uh, gee, I'd like to show this to Mr. Golden. And she said, well, go ahead. And I walked in and I stood over him and I went, <clears throat> and he wouldn't look up. <coughs> he wouldn't look up. I glanced at his secretary and she was like looking away and I realized that he was playing me. So I walked 20 feet back to her desk, picked up a dictionary, walked back to where Bill was and dropped it flat on the ground. Boom! And he jumped and he looked up and he said, Oh, George, can I help you? First thing you have to do is do great work, and the second thing is, if you have to, you pick up a dictionary and you drop it at the foot of a, of a guy and you make him pay attention to you. Copywriters uh, Hall of Fame started in 1961, and this was 1972, and I was determined to start the Hall of Fame, and uh, we did it about a boom, about a bang, you know. We uh, put in eight giants the first year. Dr. Aga, Alexei Brodovich, Cassandra. Cassandra used to thrill me when I was a kid. The first book I designed with my assistant, Dennis Mazzello. And on the backbone, we have a photograph of each of the eight men. When you set up all the books 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you could have the photographs of everybody in the Arctic Hall of Fame. I thought that was a thrilling idea. If you look at the Art Director's Hall of Fame, I mean, it was built not just on talent, but it was built on ideas, on thinking. I think our, our jobs are to try to teach the history of graphic design and advertising to young people, because why can't they create a, a new creative evolution? Congratulations, obviously, to uh, the new people getting to the Hall of Fame. It's certainly the Oscars of the advertising business. And in fact, uh, I'd rather have an Art Pictures Hall of Fame award than an Oscar. So screw you. And the, the people getting into the Art Pictures Hall of Fame will get a kick out of that. Yeah, this one you can't have. <laughs> you gotta, gotta give it a shine here. <laughs> <laughs>